Furman will receive to kick it away. Trey Harold, number 15. He'll handle all the long place kicking duties today. And back to receive Mark Rudder, a 5'8 junior, number 24. He has averaged 25.7 yards of return on kickoff returns. He's had one run of 90 yards this year. And Sam, they'd certainly like to get out of the box quick. That's what they've had an advantage of doing early in these playoff games is getting back. Harold's kick and Rudder will be driven all the way back nine yards deep in the end zone. He'll down it there. And the Paladins of Furman dressed out in purple tops with white pants. Wilson Mann in the front of the eye. He is a good blocking back. And they'll start with two tight ends. The center is Gene Reeder. The most outstanding blocker in the Southern Conference, even at only 212 pounds. And this is Jager on the toss. And Jager gets maybe a half a yard back to the line of scrimmage. Hit by Eddie Johns, number 79. Long signal count. And they'll give it to the up man. That's the fullback with a big hole. Dry. And Dry crosses the 35 to about the 37-yard line. A 15-yard gain, 212 pounds. Fake to dry, Lamb on the option, pitches to Jager, and Jager with room to run up to near the 45-yard line, very close to a first down, a gain of nine for Jager, putting possession of the ball game. The NCAA Division I AA Championship, the Diamond Bowl, from the Tacoma Dome in Tacoma, Washington. On second and one, Lamb to throw for the first time. And it's incomplete, in and out of the hands of Steve Coppinger, the tight end. Had a couple of different cracks at it, could less than a yard. They gambled on second down, trying to pick something up. Lamb on a roll, near side, incomplete. That time tried to hit Mark Rudd. Trying to go to the air, and that's what happens instead of trying to get the first down. Alston Hamilton is in to punt, and there is nobody deep for Georgia Southern. And Hamilton just lays it up, and let's see what kind of a bounce it gets. Now, why did Georgia Southern not have anyone deep on a uh, punting situation? I can't answer that one. I have never seen that formation, but... For it is extremely difficult to put a defense on, but as we said in the opening of the show, Sam, uh, that Furman defensive uh, unit has played really well the last month. They've been very stingy. Nobody has rushed for over 50 yards in the last month and a half. Tracy Ham, he'll give it to Harris. Cutting back inside, Ricky Harris. They get maybe two. Harris, six feet. 190-pound junior has rushed for over a closer to eight. Ricky Harris is 29, set on a wing. And he'll get the ball. Got up to about the 17-yard line. Nice play by Steve Squire, the free safety, who came up and made the trip. Squire, number 22, the free safety, made that last tackle. This is third and five. Harris, the fullback, broke off one tackle and into the secondary. He's got a first down at the 28-yard line. Five, not get stopped behind the line very often. In two years, he has lost five yards. First and ten. The pitch to Ricky Harris outside. Nice tackle again by Steve Squire, who comes up from his safety spot to make a short. This guy doesn't make the play, then it's Katie Barr the door. Squire is the number two tackler on the ball club, coming in with 81 stops and five interceptions. Second down, eight yards to go. Ham to throw the first time. He's got a man out there, and it's complete to Monty Sharp, the flanker back at the Furman 25-yard line. And if you have an option quarterback who has an arm, it can be deadly. Very deadly. They went to the strong side of the field and then threw back to the slot formation to Monty Sharp, who was running against a strong safety, Russell Rush. That's a good catch. 39-yard gain, and Georgia Southern, an offensive unit that averages 29.7 points a game, has a first down in Furman territory. Gerald Harris right up the middle. Breaks a tackle down to the 16-yard line of the Paladins. Another on the ground so far here in the first quarter. 9.43 to go. There is no score. And Tracy Ham, a tremendous option quarterback, running the offense. 
Once again, they'll give it to the fullback, Harris, inside the 15 to maybe the 14-yard line. On the bottom of the punt of them is uh, really the tight end, Barron, number 27. And Barron will get the football. Squire chasing him and helped him out of bounds. What a shot he took over there from Robert Little, number 40, out of the fullback, Harris, the remaining setback. Ham wants to throw. Now he's in trouble and just threw it away. Nice play by Ham. He had Ricky Harris out there, but he wasn't trying to hit him. Just a field goal attempt by Tim Foley, one of the best kickers in the country. He is 20 out of 22 in the field goal department this year, but he missed this one. Foley, 30 and 34 respectively, the running backs behind Bobby Lamb. Second offensive possession for Furman. Dry, the fullback. Hit pretty hard by John Richardson, number 77. That was, uh, in most cases, 30 to 40 pounds a man. The offensive line of the Paladins of Furman. Second and six. They'll give it to Dry, the fullback again. Big hole this time. And Dry is tripped up by Jesse Jenkins, the number one tackler. On I doubt it. <laughs> I've, I've slowed down measurably. 7.19 to go for Furman. Jenkins, who made the tackle, by the way, the last of the original Eagles. This is Jager outside on the toss as the quarterback, Bobby Lamb, was level in the back. And Jenkins is the last of the original Eagles. Everyone has always said he's not big enough to play, but he's been in there for four years, and he is their best defensive lineman. Lamb throwing sideline, complete. Caught by Jeff Lee, the backup tight end. A Almost always will run out of the eye formation. They're in it now. The option again, and Lamb will keep it this time. He's got the first down to about the 47, near the 48-yard line. They don't like him to run. First and 10 for the Paladins. Six minutes, 10 seconds to go. First quarter in a scoreless game. Straight back to throw. Good protection. Guns it over the middle, and it's complete to Kirk Burnett. Kirk Burnett, brother. With a lot of people with interceptions. They'll go with two tight ends. This is Bagwell into the ball game, carrying it for the first time down to the Georgia Southern 33-yard line. Bagwell, a sophomore who's gained very well programmed to run this offense. Fakes the toss, wants to throw again, right on target one more time. This is Mark Rudder who makes the catch in five yards on the season. He's completing almost 58% of his passes. Once again, two tight ends out of the eye. They'll run the option to the weak side, and Lamb kept it. Just dragged down. Number 19, Bobby Lamb. He just had one scoring threat that misfired, and now Furman with its first big threat. Sent Grady, wide left, number 83. And Burnett, number 10, is wide to the right. It looks like Lamb is changing the play at the line of, the scrim line of scrimmage. He'll go to his fullback straight up the middle inside the 10 to about the 9-yard line is John Dry, the senior from Landis, South Carolina. We might. And from nothing in four years, he has his team in a divisional championship game. This is Bagwell, cuts inside Bagwell on his feet to the 1-yard line. Good hard running ball and Dry are the running backs. And it's Bagwell, cuts it back, touchdown! Furman did just about everything you could ask on that drive. They threw the ball well, and they ran it well, inside and outside. And that's just it. They kept Georgia Southern guessing on defense. They'd think they were going to run the ball, then they'd throw it. Kevin Esval is on to attempt the point after. He is 57 of 58 this year. 205-pound senior soccer-style kicker. And he's got it through, and the Paladins of Furman from Greenville, South Carolina, have taken the lead. We've got another break in the action with our score. Furman 7 and Georgia Southern nothing. In the first period. Fernando Acosta Rua to kick it off to Tony Belser. And it's taken by one of the upmen and fumbled. That's Gary Miller, reserve fullback, who will take it out to the 30-yard. They have 32 yards rushing so far here in the first period. They run out of a variety of formations. Ham keeping it. And they 
they got him as he crossed the 35 to about the 36. Good gain by Ham, who Irk Russell calls the best. That's a guy into his chest and then make the pitch the last second. He's have very, to, very effective. We have to make the differentiation between fast and quick. He is not fast at a 4740, but man, is he quick. This time he is not quick enough. They got him in the backfield and a nice defensive. When you stop it early, you, you cause that mesh a lot of problem. Third down, six yards to go for Georgia Southern, their own 36-yard line. The Eagles have one, had one scoring threat and missed a field goal. Ham to throw, got it out to the sideline, complete to the back, Harris. And Harris has the first down to about the 44-yard line. Ricky Harris, the leading... Talking it over. We'll check the call for you. On the offense. Illegal motion. This way. And it will go against them and they're bothered by it. And it throws them right out of their game plan. Third and long. Ham straight back to throw this time. Not running out of the option. And now he'll run out of the pocket and keep it. Got to the sideline. First down. Shoved out of bounds by Squire. Number 25, Carl. With an offense named after him. He'll pitch it this time to his tailback, Ricky Harris. And not much on that one as Furman covered it well. There's another flag down. I believe what happened is I think he has an equipment problem with that helmet, and they want to take him to the sideline to get that right, I've got illegal motion. It's on the illegal offense. Motion. Has been declined. Second down. They'll decline it because there was no gain on the run. It comes to the right, along with Barron, the tight end, on second and long. Ham. Being forced out of the pocket again, oodles of time, and now he'll run it across midfield to the 48-yard line and trailing the play, which is Ham has carried the ball himself for 27 yards here in the period, but they will not get off another play here at the first quarter at the Tacoma Dome. We have run out of time. That is the end of the first quarter with the score. Furman 7 and Georgia Southern nothing. We'll be back after this message. This is an NCAA Productions telecast. Georgia Southern with the ball at the Furman 47-yard line. And Tracy Ham trying to outrun Squire, and Squire will get him out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Well, they really sucked him in on that one. Six yards, working on 1,100 for the season. First and 10. Ham, he'll keep it this time. He did not make the right decision. And a nice tackle by Carl. Coming up from his outside, ready to take the pitch man. So he said, well, I'll just take this one yard gain. If the pitch man is covered, the quarterback really doesn't have much of an option after that. They'll give it straight up the middle of the fullback. Not much there this time either. They get near the 25 yard line at a time. You got Ricky Harris on a wing. It's third and six. And Ham to throw. Plenty of time again. Chased out of the pocket again. Look out from behind. Got it away and it was knocked down. Got a lot of pressure that time, and Jeff Blankenship, he is 20 of 23 this year, including this earlier in the ballgame. Plenty of leg on this, and he got it through. 44-yard field goal by the sophomore place kicker, Tim Foley, and Georgia Southern has gotten on the board with 13.33 to go in the half. We've got a timeout on the field with our score, Furman 7 and Georgia Southern 3 for this kick. We're in a beautiful facility today, the Tacoma Dome, the largest wooden beam structure in the world. And Rudder will down this one again, very deep because of something, and stayed. Well, Bigfoot's from the Northwest. That's right. First and 10 Paladins from the 20. And Lamb will give it to his fullback. Nothing there. Dry didn't have a chance as Jesse Jenkins, number 67, right into three. Furman, they're facing second and 10 right now for their own 20. Lamb straight back to throw over the middle, complete again. Lamb is really hot. This is Jeff Lee, his tight end near the 30 yard line and another first down. Dry is the fullback in the eye. Instead, they'll toss it to Bagwell, the tailback trying to get outside, and he has the first down. Boy, did he take a shot. Number 24. First down, 10 yards to go. Bagwell is a good hard runner. Jager has come back in at the tailback spot, and he'll get the pitch. Trying to get outside, no dice. Excellent defensive work that time. Danny Durham, number 20, maybe a half yard on that last play. 
Lamb with plenty of time. Again, complete across the 45 to about the 47 yard line is Larry Hartz. They'll give it to Dry, bobble the ball for a second, and then breaks loose. Dry inside the 40 to about the 39 yard line of Georgia Southern, brought down by Danny Durham, the linebacker. Georgia Southern, 39 yard line. Bagwell back in at the tailback spot, and Lamb to throw. Blitz, and they got him. They sent everybody back of the ball game. Go with three wide receivers. Lamb throws, and he's got another man out there. Stone Hall, big play, first and 10 Furman. They're already up 7-3 to three and driving. Now at the Georgia Southern 21. Bagwell again cuts it back. Nice kick out block again by the fullback that time. And Bagwell is inside the time since 1978. Again, and this time there is going to be a flag down. They'll get interference as Grady was running a post pattern. And the penalty is holding against holding Georgia Southern. On the defense, an automatic first down. It'll be first and goal. The ball spotted inside the nine yard line. Audible. Bagwell to the five. Touchdown. Again, power running by John Bagwell, turning it on. Excellent kick out block by the fullback. And let's give a lot of credit to Bobby Lamb. You could tell it was an audible. He saw something in that defense that left the hole, and sure enough, he picked the right play. I think what Bobby saw was the fact that Georgia Southern, there was nobody that was more than five yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Everybody was up around the line of scrimmage, and when that happens, all you have to do is break the plane, and there's nobody that can track it down from pursuit because you're in the short end of the football field. Esval is on for the point after. 58 of 59 this year, make it 59 out of 60. And with 8.22 to go in the first half, Furman has jumped on top. We've got a timeout on the field. Our score, the Paladins 14, Georgia Southern 3. Once again taken by one of the up men at Georgia Southern. Get back to the 30-yard line, and that is Gary Miller who fielded the last one. So Georgia 22 and 2. Ham on the option, has to keep it, dives across the 25. Once again, defense very well by the Paladin defense. Carl to run with the football. Even though it didn't look like much, Ham still got five yards out of that one. He is seven for 50 on the day. Fullback will get two or three. That's Gerald Harris. So about the third to go for the Georgia Southern offense, which has been held without a touchdown for a quarter and a half. Probably getting a little itchy right now. Send the tight end in motion. Offensive line moved. And that's Jeff Evans, number 60 who stood up a count before the snap and got caught. Once the offensive lineman hand touches the ground, he cannot move, he cannot change his stance at all. That time he did. Evans has a word with the official, but it's not going to help. Never does. Penalty against Georgia Southern. Furman has not been whistled for one. Third down, eight yards to go now. Maybe another passing down for Tracy Ham. And he's straight back to throw. Guns this one complete. Good throw that time to Tony Belser. And every time he catches the football. And wants to throw again. And just overthrown for Monty Sharp. Just outside that is something else. That's right. Can't shut it all down. And two out of four, 64 yards. He'll run the option again, and he got it off to Harris, the tailback, and Harris is dragged down. What a great play by Russell Rush, the strong man in 10. Scoreboard showing second down, but it is third. Over the middle, complete to Belser. Belser inside the 25 to about the 24-yard line. Minutes and 15 seconds to go. First half, Georgia Southern driving, trailing 14 to 3. Ricky Harris trying to cut it outside. Once again, another good points a game and a lot of yards, almost 400 a ball game. But right now, they only have three points on the board.
Fake the inside handoff this time, and Ham is being chased. Got away. Great move by Tracy Ham, still on his feet inside the 20 to about the 17 yard line with 349 and counting in the first half. Harris, the fullback, will be stopped shy of the first down. Hit it about, and this time Foley will be kicking from 33 yards away. He is perfect from that distance this season. Got the snap down, and Foley just bombs it into the upper deck and gets Georgia Southern on the board again. We have a timeout on the field. 3:08 to go in the half. Our score: Furman 14 and Georgia Southern six. kick to Mark Rudder. And Rudder will have a chance to return this one from the two-yard line. Nice return by Rudder. About 20 yards up. Furman leading 14 to 6 with 3.02 to go in the first half. Mike Patrick along with Sam Atkins. Hope you're enjoying the ball game from the Tacoma Dome in Tacoma, Washington. Sam, what do you think here? They're going to sit on it or try to get some more points? They're going to definitely try to get some more points, open it up, and mix it up like they have been. Lamb gives to Dry, the fullback with another big hole up the middle, gets to the 29-yard line. Second and three, the clock is running. Lamb under some pressure, over the middle, got his tight end. To about the 43-yard line, Steve Coppinger, but there is a flag down, and it's back in the Furman backfield for the Paladins. All right, I got holding on the offense. We'll repeat the down. Two wide receivers and a wing back. Dry is the remaining running back behind Lamb, who wants to throw against a four-man rush. Again, very accurate over the middle, and he completes it to Kirk Burnett. And Burnett up to about the 27-yard line. Burnett's averaged almost one and a half. Furman in possession with an eight-point lead. And Lamb wants to throw for the first down. Deeper over the middle this time. And a good throw to Chris Speaks. And a nice grab by Speaks at the 45. It is a first down. And Finding the receiver that's hooking up in that seam. Very impressed by Lamb's performance here in the first half. Very heady quarterback. Out to Bagwell, and Bagwell is knocked out of bounds at the Georgia Southern 46-yard line. Boy, Furman just seems to do everything right. They charge this season coming into this ballgame. The passing efficiency champion in college football. A rating of over 170, which is incredible. On the option, they'll get it to Bagwell. Bagwell stayed on his feet. To the 37 yard line. What a job by Bagwell, who was at a tremendous disadvantage when he got that pitch. With 121 to go, we've got a timeout on the field. We'll be back in a moment. Paladin's trying to add some more points to the total. Lamb back to throw again. He has been sensational. And hits it over the middle inside the 20 to about the 15 yard line. Once again, it's Grady. They're at the Georgia Southern 17-yard line, well within field goal range, leading 14-6. And Lamb, who has been almost perfect, back to throw again, and a flag goes down, and there's going to be interference as Larry Grady was being covered by Nay Young, and Young was all over. More than 15 yards, then they just take and penalize the team 15 yards. All right, I got pass interference. It's on the defense. We got an automatic first down. So in this case, uh, they'll move the ball half the distance between, and it's a first down and three. It turns out to be a seven-yard penalty. Lamb on the option. He'll keep it. Touchdown. Bobby Lamb just held on, saw the seam, and dove into the corner of the end zone. That's taking what the defense is giving you. Georgia Southern had three defenders on the wide side of the field with the Furman two wide receivers. Bobby Lamb ran the option the other way into the short side of the field. And watch, if we can take a look at the replay, we'll see. We will see the nice block by full, the fullback die. Esfall comes on for the point after. He is two for two in this game. 59 out of 60 on the year. And he booms another one through there. And Furman has done what it did to kick it away. And 
Belser now waiting on the near side will try to get the ball. Instead, it's going to go to number 29, Ricky Harris. And Harris crosses the 20 to only about the 21 yard line. Now the clock is continuing to run as we get a little extracurricular activity out there. Classic. Foul. Personal foul. This way. It will go against Georgia Southern, as is almost everything right now. Out of Statesboro, Georgia. And Ham with the little inside toss to Ricky Harris. Harris up to the 20, that little shovel pass. Underneath, and you just kind of give him a little inside flip. Hurry up offense as Ham tries to get out and throw the ball, guns it over the middle, complete nice toss to Sharp. And Sharp brought down at the 32, and they're going to stop the clock now with 20 seconds left. Georgia Southern will use one of its timeouts. Obviously, uh, that's why I'm up in the left first half. Ham back to throw again, being chased out of the pocket. He'll try to run it this time. Gets to about the 41-yard line, and they'll stop the clock again. This time, only 12 seconds remain. Did exactly what I think Furman wanted him to do on that play, run and eat up some of that clock. Yes, they definitely, you give him anything short underneath. Just drop everybody back. Don't. Our Georgia Bulldogs always had tremendous defensive units. 12 seconds left, second and two. Georgia Southern needs a big play here to get in field goal range. About 35 yards. And time is going to expire before Ham gets his playoff, throws the bomb. And it's intercepted. And it's picked off. Jerome Norris made the interception. He was down there covering Delano Little. And boy, Tracy Ham has got an arm. He unloaded that baby. That is the end of the first half. The score, Furman 21, Georgia Southern 6. And we'll be right back with our halftime show after these messages. Their deep receiver around, Belser, but he's not been able to get his hands on the ball. And once again, they'll kick it to Ricky Harris from the 10-yard line. Nice return by Harris up to about the 27-28. And Georgia Southern will start from there. Here's the first half stats. Made him so effective this first half. Tracy Ham is the fullback, or the quarterback, rather. Looking to throw on first down over the middle. Incomplete off the fingertips of Monty Sharp is for the first 10 seconds of the third quarter here in Tacoma. Mike Patrick and Sam Atkins with you. Hope you're enjoying the ball game. Here's the option, hand to throw under some pressure. Rolls out of it, guns it, complete. Good throw and a good catch by Tony Belser. Field and throws a nice pass up the field. Belser, who averages 25 yards a catch on the season, grabbed that one and has a first down. Hand to throw again, that little shovel pass to Harris. And defense well by the Paladins, and Harris gets to the 45-yard line. Second and seven. Ricky Harris with a bad pitch, can't pick it up. Still can't pick it up, but he tossed it out of bounds. Harris got it out of bounds at the 30, but that will be a big loss for Georgia Southern. And the first young man, a 1,028-yard rusher this year. And back to throw, wants a screen and overthrew his fullback, Gerald Harris. So it's two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Saying, I want to get out of this town alive. Downfield, loss of down, four. Now that's the kind of penalty, uh, in this case, it really doesn't matter. So they'll have to kick it away, and Pat Parker, who averages 37.2 yards a kick, will punt to Rudder. The 42, got away from one tackle. Flag goes down, he will not get away from any others. Good hard running by Rudder, but he stopped where he took it at the 42-yard line, and the penalty is going to go against Furman from the reaction of the Georgia Southern. And it's a clip, the preliminary signal. So that's going to push uh, Furman back out of really excellent field position. Use that oblong one. <laughs> With stripes on it. Bobby Lamb calling signals. Fakes to his fullback, then tosses it back to the tailback. Another good gain to the 39-yard line. Brian Jager 
Jager and from Dunwoody, Georgia. And it's a first and 10 for the Paladins of Furman, already leading 21-6, looking for more. Fullback again, straight up the middle, big hole. From Statesboro, Georgia, to come all the way to Tacoma to follow their team. Goldsmith again, a huge hole. And Goldsmith breaks it inside the Georgia Southern 35 to the 34-yard line. Kenneth. Another first down for the Paladins at the 34-yard line. Lamb changing the play at the line of scrimmage again. He has been successful every time he's done that, and he still is. And it's a touchdown for Grady. Every time Bobby Lamb changes the play at the line of scrimmage, Furman comes up the big winner. Hey, deaf people in Georgia very proud. There's 31 Georgians on the Furman roster. Esfall knocks it through. And it is 28-6, so there's a timeout on the field. Our score, the Paladins of Furman, 28, the Georgia Southern Eagles, 6. Here's the touchdown play that put Furman up by 21 points. Looking at Bobby Lamb, see there's no one in the middle of the football field, which is wide open. That's when you want to run that post pattern. You can see Nay Young coming from the other side of the football field. And Making a 22-point lead, and this is Belser with his first crack at a kick return, and he only got it back to the 15-yard line. Georgia Southern Sam is in a lot of trouble right now. They need to get something working on the back. But he needs to get a lot of yards right now, and with 10.52 to go in the third quarter, his team is down by 22. Ham double clutch throw. Oh, great throw that time. What a pass to Frank Johnson. Southern. Ham wants to throw again out in the flat. Nice fake that time by Johnson. He got a couple, and that's all. Georgia Southern defended that very well. Heading on the sideline, healthy. He came in late. Here's the pitch to Johnson. And Furman again, right there. Coming up from the secondary, good hit by Daryl Gardner, number 40. They'll send three wide receivers to the far side. Ham under pressure this time, trying to run it up the middle. Cat quick inside the 50, 45, 40, still on his feet at the 35-yard line. What a performance by Tracy Ham. And the Georgia Southern bench is just erupting right now. Tracy Ham, great individual effort. They took, they wanted to just run a simple delay route. Furman took it away. They jammed both receivers on that side. So Tracy says, I'll take it in my own hands. And then there you see he just putting a lot of nice moves and just continuing to keep his feet going. He almost broke that one. Boy, he just makes people look bad. Ham under pressure again. Three or four pump fakes now under a lot in a lot of trouble through and dropped by Sharp. And and will blow the play dead. He delay a game. Did not get it off in the a lot of uh, philosophy. Hey, we're all in this together. Man in motion is Herman Barron. Wants to throw again under tremendous pressure. Got rid of it and complete to Johnson. Boy, just credit Ham. He is so quick and so bright. Presence of mind saying, hey, where's my receiver? Better he than me. And he had something on it and completed it. Big play, third and 14. Ham double pumps. He's in trouble this time. Got rid of it and completed again. This is his fullback, Gerald Harris. Harris to the 30, a flag is down. Harris near the first down at the 26 yard line, but I think we've got a clip or a hole. Excellent job of running with the football, but sure I did. believe it's gonna come back because Frankie jo Johnson clipped Carl Moody. And it is exactly right, Sam. Let's watch Tracy's ham compose right here. Third and 21, ham brings him out. a two-man rush and a 
man still wide open, and he hit him. That's Belser at the 24-yard line, first down. Nine men back on coverage, and Tracy Ham found Belser. Even with nine men back, there's seams. My goodness, let's take a look at this from the end zone. Look at all the time that he has. He looks to his left, looking to defense. Then he looks back, sees Belser in the middle, and just throws a shot behind the linebacker. That's a very, very tough throw because the ball's got to get up and go down. Look at the collision and the concentration of Belzer. Look at the shot that he takes. He bounced three yards forward. That's Steve Squire, who's hit several people today. 10 out of 17, 169 yards for Ham, and it's a touchdown to Monty Sharp. Georgia. Great pattern and a great throw. Great throw by Tracy Ham, starting out to his left and pulling up and throwing back. They've had a lot of success because the defense is so concerned about pursuit and not letting him get outside. He gets them going that way, and then he's throwing back where they to where they have moved from, finding those seams. That time he threw that post pattern because the weak safety had come to the left side of the field. Now you would expect Georgia Southern to go for two. A little confusion and they have to use a timeout that they may need dearly later. This is a very, very big play because they have to have the two points. Of course, it's the kind of thing that drives coaches nuts, too. Man in motion is Barron, and Ham wants to throw again. Now he'll run. He's got an opening. And Tracy Ham gets the two-point conversion. Big play there because Georgia Southern has now pulled within two seven points. Time out on the field. The score, Furman 28 and Georgia Southern 14. Here's the touchdown that gets Georgia Southern back in it. Tracy Ham pulling up to his left, trying the defense and creating, moving that free safety to the left, opening that seam for Monty Sharp. Nice throw. Georgia Southern to kick it off. Foley with Rudder waiting deep in his own end zone. The straightaway kickoff man got a five yard deep and Rudder wants to bring it out. Ooh. And his blocker was knocked down and Rudder went down over him. Shine. And he'll start inside his own 20 yard line. Give it to the fullback. Not much there. Georgia Southern. Cushions. Goldsmith is in there at fullback. Speaks as a wingback. And Lamb wants to throw. Sideline and incomplete. Speaks was over there. He thought he had it. May have been out of bounds when he caught it. When Lamb has missed, and it's been very rarely, it's not been his fault. He's been on target with every throw. Three-man rush. And this time it's knocked away. Great defensive play by Nay Young. Georgia Southern has gone down the field. They scored and they shut them down in three and out. Big Mo might be moving over here to the white side of the field. Alston Hamilton, who was the regular season punter and did not kick until this championship game in the playoffs because of the 52-man player limit, gets off a nice high punt that will roll dead at the 44-yard line, but it's excellent field position. Smith and would, did not allow him enough room. He was wanting interference. 5.49 to go, third quarter. Georgia Southern with the football. Ham under a lot of pressure again. Still got it off and incomplete. Ham really pressured that time. He had Kenny Alder number 51 all over him. Has had Ham twice and made him throw in a hurry. Second and ten. That's Barron in motion. And Ham straight back to throw this time. He's been more successful on these patterns and hits Barron at the 41. When he gets it, trying to get back in it. And the fullback, My. Gerald Harris, had nowhere to go. He ran into a stone wall. They want you to stand on the sideline. <laughs> now you tell me. Oh. He had to throw again. Once again, a quick pattern has a man out there complete. It's going to be a touchdown. Frank Johnson. He split two defenders inside the 10-yard line. 
and took it in. It's almost like deja vu. Whatever Furman does about three plays later or three series later, then Georgia Southern will come back and the same thing happens. Here, the two defenders knock each other off and allow Frankie Johnson to go in for a score. Great throw, great concentration. But I think that's the reason because they're throwing the football that Frankie Johnson's in the ball game and not Ricky Harris. I think you're exactly right about that. The point after would pull Georgia Southern within seven, and it does. And you've got to give a tremendous amount of credit, Sam, I think, to Georgia Southern coach Irk Russell and his coaching staff. Their bread and butter is running that option play, and Furman shut it down. So they've gone to something else, and very few teams can do that and do it successfully. That's exactly right. Now it's, that's what coaching is all about. Looking at that touchdown again, Tracy Ham looking again. He looks the defense off to the left side of the field and then throws back in that seam. And there's Frankie Johnson missing the tack, uh, uh, making them miss on the tackle and just lowering his head. Looking at it from the end zone, you can see how he pulls up and you can see the defense get pulled out of position and Frankie Johnson running back across the grain. Nice throw. Tracy Ham now 13 out of 21, 248 yards and two touchdowns. Those are not bad stats for an Zerk. 17 years, the defensive coordinator in Georgia. Took over at Georgia Southern. Rudder a yard deep this time. Got a hole this time. Got across the 20 at least to about the 22-yard line. And Furman now in the Bobby Lamb, the quarterback. Under pressure. And he escapes and throws sideline incomplete to Kirk Burnett. Burnett had a chance to catch it and didn't hold it. And Furman needs a big play. Plenty of time against the three-man rush in. Incomplete off the fingertips of Larry Grady. So they've got to punt it again. Low line drive kick. Fair catch called for by Belser. Has it at the 41. And once again, Georgia Southern will have tremendous field position to start. And this game has really just turned around uh, 180 degrees. Dandy Don was here. He'd probably be singing turn out the lights. But we got a ball game now. Yeah, they better, they better put it back on manual. 3.28 to go. And Georgia Southern is going to stick with what's working. Almost intercepted. Second and 10. That's Worsham in motion, and they'll blow the play dead before it gets snapped. False start. This way. Had a false start on somebody. That'll cost him five yards. Left-hand side of your screen, you can see when the defense shifted outside, that caused the offensive line to wiggle a little bit, and they can't do that. Second and 15. Ham to throw again. Now he'll run out of the pocket. Almost to midfield. Dragged down from behind by Jeff Blankenship, the freshman linebacker. Worsham in motion. And they'll run the option to get the three. They pitch it. Harris. He's going to go all the way. Gerald Harris, touchdown. And we're one point away from being tied. Holy cow. Excellent, excellent play by Tracy Ham. The time Furman did not have anyone assigned to the quarterback. They had one guy, they, the option man got caught, and he had to, to make a decision whether to go to the pitch man or take the quarterback. Tracy Ham pulled him in and then made at the last second, made the pitch to Harris, and Harris just turned it on going down the sideline. Gerald Harris with his 17th touchdown rushing this year. He has carried eight times for 84 yards. This would tie it up and does. Georgia Southern, after being down 28 to 6, has scored 22 straight points in about a half a quarter and has tied it up at 28 all. How's that for a comeback, Sam? Boy, that's great. And they have come back and they've done it, like we said, throwing the football. 
This time, now they have Furman. They have Furman thinking that they're going to be passing now all the time. Third and short, and they come with the option, and you can see that running lane that Harris had, and he just turned it on down the sideline. The secondary got caught up. They got the the offensive line was able to go down, seal off the backside, which gave Harris the running lane. 2.28 to go in the third quarter, and Irk Russell has to be very proud of his ball club. Can't proud you tell? of his coaching staff, too. Oh, yeah, look at his smile. They made. That's right. <laughs> hey, you know coaches don't smile till it's over. Oh, that's right. And then only one of them does. <laughs> you know, before he got into coaching, I bet he had hair. Has not had a great deal of success in this game. On the season, he's averaged almost 26 yards a return. Harold drills this one. Eight yards deep, and Rudder will have to recover the fumble and down it. And Furman, once again, will start in poor field position from their own 20-yard line. Sam shut down almost totally defensively since they scored here at the start of the third quarter. They'll give it to Bagwell. The tailback cuts it out, then cuts it back in. Good run by Bagwell. Hard running across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. Goldsmith is in there at fullback. They'll give it to Bagwell. Still on his feet, diving forward. Got within about a foot of the first down. Bagwell's second effort has really resulted in some yards today. He's a Two tight ends. Bagwell on the toss, trying to get outside, and they won't do it. Bagwell brought down at the 29-yard line. Brought down by Danny Durham, the linebacker. Robert Underwood was also Hamilton in to punt again. And Belser is deep to receive, standing at his own 32. Hamilton needs a good kick, and he got one. Hung it high beautifully to the 34-yard line. Hamilton's best kick. To throw the football, that's a definite advantage. You still stick with the passing game? Oh, yeah. Get, stay with the girl that you brought to the dance. They give it to the fullback up the middle. That's Harris across the 40 to about the 41. And it doesn't look like we'll get another playoff here in the quarter. And quarterback Tracy Ham walks toward the sideline. He doesn't want to get off another play. He wants to switch sides. That's the end of the third quarter with our score. Furman 28 and Georgia Southern 28. We'll be right back after these messages. 28 all as we start the final 15 minutes of the Diamond Bowl, the NCAA Division I AA Championship from Tacoma, Washington. And Georgia Southern has certainly turned this game around. Second and five from their own 40. Ham to throw. Once again, fakes that quick play. Now being chased out of the pocket. He'll keep it, and this time they'll wrap him up. And it's number 79, Ham, who came into the game with 1,041 rushing, so he's up over 1,100. First and 10, they'll give an inside handoff to Johnson. To midfield. They have run it for years and always seemingly to perfection. There's only so many things you can run on a football field. Second and five for Georgia Southern. Ham gets it out to Johnson, who's been dynamite out of the backfield. Johnson to the 37-yard line. Frankie Johnson has been a him to them very quickly. That's exactly right, because that way they can get the ball tucked away and then turn up field and have a chance to make a move. First and ten, that was Barron in motion. Inside handoff again, coming back to the tailback. To the 24-yard line goes Ricky Harris, who is back in there now. 38 for another first down, and this proud Furman defense is being chewed up here in the second half. Ham to throw again quickly. His tailback inside the 15, Ricky Harris. Harris came into this game as the worked on stopping the option, the heart and soul of this offense. They've done it, and now they're being burned with everything else. Ham straight back to throw again. Touchdown! That's Herman Barron, the tight end from Milledgeville, Georgia. And the Georgia Southern offense is absolutely on fire. They are unconscious right now. They are doing everything they want. Tracy Ham had all day back there to throw. You could see him looking to the left, and then he had three different receivers that he could pick from on that touchdown. Found the seam and then threw the shot. Well, we expected points, and we're sure getting them. And the point after, right through the heart of it. 
12 21 to go in the game there's a timeout on the field the score Georgia Southern 35 Furman 28. Trey Harold to kick it off this time he missed it and will kick it out of bounds that'll cost him five. Maybe he had his shoe tied just a little bit too tight. So they'll move it back to the 35 yard line and this is waiting at his two. Harold really got all of this one and drives Rudder all the way back to the goal line. Furman needs a big return and they won't get a big one. They'll get back out over the 25. And Bobby Lamb needs to get that Furman offense back in. Remaining running back is dry. They have Jager number 34 on a wing, and now he'll come back to tailback on first and 10 from the 26. Run the option to Jager. Jager with a big hole, cuts it outside to the 45 yard line. That's it on a fake. Jager, six carries, 40 yards. First and 10, Paladins at their own 44. Whale of a championship game from Tacoma. Lamb throws it over the middle, and it was knocked away. Great defensive play by Tyrone Hall. 11 minutes, 34 seconds to go in the title game. Second and 10, Furman, their own 44. Lamb on the option, gets it to Jager. Jager still on his feet as he reaches the Furman or the Georgia Southern 45-yard line. And Furman looks a little sharper on offense right now than they have the entire second half. Lamb on the option again. He'll keep it. 35, 32-yard line. First down. Nay Young had to make the tackle along with Larry Boone, one of the back to the eye. Jager the tailback. Dry is the fullback. They'll give it to Jager. Straight ahead handoff, and this one doesn't go anywhere. Tyrone Hall, number 46, as Jager got three out of that one. Now Bagwell is in at the tailback, and he'll get the pitch. Bagwell trying to get outside to the sideline, he goes. Driven out of bounds at the 25. Bagwell got all out of that one that he could. For Furman, they need to keep the drive alive. Lamb on the option, cuts it back, first down at the 20. Nice play by Lamb. He was concerned about the first down. Off there in the third quarter, but looks like he's back in control. Well, we were told we'd see two great quarterbacks today, and they told us the truth. They have been exceptional. Bagwell, the tailback, Goldsmith now in at fullback. Goldsmith will have the ball. Goldsmith to the 14-yard line. Five for the Paladins. Goldsmith and Bagwell, the running backs. Lamb will keep it on the option. Not much this time. Got to about the 12. It'll be two yards shy of a first down. Danny Allen again coming. Third down, three yards to go for Bobby Lamb. Bagwell following Goldsmith. Gets to about the seven, and it's another Furman first down. Well, they like to remember there would be an overtime in case of a tie. Bagwell again on the toss behind Goldsmith. Bagwell, touchdown! Tremendous running, just power running, keeping those feet going. He just followed Goldsmith right into the end zone. And again, Nay Young was just in, in reverse. He's used to retreating as a defensive back, and he saw that blocker coming, didn't realize where the goal line was, and didn't try to shed the blocker, allowed Bagwell to score. For people who have never played this game at any level, it might be hard to understand how much courage it takes for both of these clubs to do what they've done. First for Georgia Southern to make the tremendous comeback to go ahead, and then for Furman to suck it up and come back in this point after would tie it and does. That is a tremendous gut check right there. It, it definitely is a gut check. 7.51 left. To the timeout on the field. The score, Georgia Southern 35 and Furman 35. Puts him into the end zone. Furman kicking off. This is Belser, a yard deep in the end zone. Belser breaks a tackle. Flags are down because we had a clip inside the 10-yard line. Very obvious, and the official a little late with the flag, but doing this one to me. Personal foul. Personal foul. This way. First down. There was a clip, and then they called the personal foul. A double foul. Later. And they move it back to the 19-yard line. And that's a big break for Georgia Southern. 
Seven forty five left in the game. We're tied at thirty five points apiece. Ham quarterback draw. Just cat quick. Getting through people. Tripped up by Jeff Blankenship and if he didn't get him. Ham's probably team carries 107 yards on the day. Second and five. Ham guns it over the middle complete to Belser at the 38 yard line. Tony Belser has made several clutch catches. 39 left to go in the game. We are tied at 35. Johnson inside handoff gets to the 40 maybe the 41 yard line and no more. Tracy Ham is injured and remember bear in mind they do have a very good place kicker. Ball spotted at the 46 yard line second and seven. Ham on the option. They'll force him out of bounds at about the 43 yard line is where they'll mark it. Gaino only about two. One of the few tie here with 5.52 to go. Barron in motion. Pressure on Ham. He'll go right up the middle. Dives forward. Let's see where they mark it. It's very, very close to a first down and where they're and the official now steps forward a little bit. It's going to have to be measured. Let's test your eyes here, Michael. The official having a tough time finding where to spot the well he's that was the strangest measurement I ever saw. I think the fog is getting to him. Oh he now they had to go back to the sideline. They're going to remark it again. <laughs> uh, they were measuring on the other side of the official which makes it a little difficult. It's two feet away from the ball. So now the chain gang will try it again. <laughs> he got fogged out on his flight also and he. He had to overnight it in Portland and walk up. That looked like six inches short to you, Hey, partner? You are one for one. One for one. You're on a roll. Well, I'm going to quit right now <laughs> while I'm ahead. So Georgia Southern will send in uh, three, four, five players. It looks like they're going to punt the ball, but Tracy Ham now is, is back out on the field. Maybe they'll go for it. I think they're going for it. They're bringing in the big guys, the tight ends. They're going to line everybody up. And the punter is not on the field. They will go for it with 538, fourth and inches. Let's see if Tracy Ham tries to use a hard count to draw firm and offside. This is a good time to use that. Quarterback keeper, and he looked like he got it and a little more. That's confidence in your offensive line that they can move them out. That's right. You definitely have to have that push when you run that quarterback sneak. And they've got a couple of big tackles in there. They love to run behind Vance Pike. It seems he had graded out the highest in eight of them. First and 10, 505 and counting. Georgia Southern in possession. And Ham straight back to throw. Guns it complete. 30. 25 yard line goes Delano Little. Sideline shot in there. Georgia Southern, which has had a big second half, driving to take the lead from the 25 yard line. They'll give it to Harris. Harris to about the 22. The big thing that they have to watch do not turn the football over in four down territory. Their field goal kicker Tim Foley has two today and is 22 of 25 on the year. He is a great field goal kicker. Second and seven with tremendous range by the way. And the throw. Incomplete this time just off the hands of Delano Little and good coverage back there by the Paladins. 12 and 2, Furman 12 and 1 in the championship of Division 1 AA comes down to this. Ham wants to throw under pressure. Deep sideline too high for Belser. Good coverage over there by Furman. The Paladins had three players, including number Ham to get outside the pocket because if he had been able to get outside the pocket, he would have run for a first down. Foley is on to try a 39 yard field goal. He has been perfect inside the 40 this year. Low line drive, but he got it through. Foley did not hit it perfectly, but he certainly hit it well enough. His third field goal of the ball game. There's a timeout on the field. 337 left. The score, Georgia Southern 38 and Furman 35. With 337 left to go in this championship game. 
Mark Rudder awaits Harold's kick. Eight yards deep. He'll have to down it there. And Furman, with 3.37 left in the game, will have to start from its own 20-yard line. And one more time to see if the Paladins can... <laughs> then he realized he didn't have pads on and he might get hurt. Something tells me that didn't stop him. It must have been something. It must have been a rule book. Bobby Lamb leads out his ball club. First and 10 from the 20 yard line. Furman with all three timeouts remaining. They can run their offense. They'll give it to Goldsmith straight up the middle and Goldsmith to the 34 yard line. Well, Goldsmith has. Look at the block by the center, number 52, Reeder. You can see why he was voted the best blocker in the conference. First and 10, Paladins. Completed to Chris Speaks, the tailback. Second and a yard for the Paladins, and he wants to throw it. Sideline to Goldsmith, his fullback. Goldsmith to the 48-yard line. Another first down for Furman. Nay, up. Georgia Southern, another chance of getting that football. They have to start looking at the clock. Now the key is to score, right? That's, that's the bottom line. Lamb back to throw on a three-man rush. Guns it deep over the middle, and he's got a man at the 25-yard line. That's Brian Jager that for nine yards. Tough kid, has to have his knees drained of fluid before almost every game. But he's in there, along with Goldsmith. They'll run the option. Goldsmith on the toss, forced out of bounds. They'll mark it at the 22-yard line. Brady goes to the left. Kirk Burnett splits to the right. Goldsmith and Jager are the running backs behind Bobby Lamb. Run the option to the far side. Lamb on the keeper. Now he pitches. Jager. Jager to the four-yard line. What a play by Bobby Lamb. Again, that's what I was talking about earlier, sure maintaining was. that pitch relationship. So 26 was the only defender out there. He was between a rock and a hard place. That's right. Played it as well as he possibly could. First and goal, Furman, four-yard line. Clock running, 138 left. Bagwell is in there at the tailback, and he'll get the ball behind Goldsmith. Bagwell, touchdown! What a ball game. Couldn't ask for any more, could we? They are going to have to replace this turf at the Tacoma Dome because it has worn out as much yardage has been gained today by both ball clubs. How about the scoreboard? Uh, well, that one, they have it for basketball, so it's used to going that high. This is the first Division I college football game to ever be played in the Tacoma Dome. And, boy, they've done it right. That's Bagwell, his third touchdown of the game. Big extra point here. Asphalt, the lead is three. He could make it four and force Georgia Southern to get a touchdown. And he does. Asphalt drills it through in this back and forth game. Now has Furman on top. 42 38 with a minute 32 left. Well, if you like offense, you must love this. You got that right. Is Jim Marcioni. Today's game has been produced by Irving Snuffy Smith and directed by Tommy Williamson. Our production manager, Kathy Bennett, and production facilities provided by Northwest Mobile Productions. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for all your help. You've done a great job on the telecast. Once again, it's one of the up men, and it's Gary Miller, the reserve fullback who gets it up to about the 28-yard line. And with 1.26 left, it's going to be the last hurrah for Georgia Southern. To be proud of the two best Division I AA teams in the country. They're four points apart with a minute 26 to go. And just played great. Tracy Ham, the quarterback, with his work cut out for him. They have to have a touchdown. Deep sideline pattern complete to Monty Sharp in Furman territory. But there is a flag down, and I think we have a holding penalty that is going to bring it back. It's exactly what it is. Tracy Ham had a lot of time back there to throw. They had the, and that's the truth. He is so elusive back the there. Offense. That First cost them back to the 17 yard line where it's first and 15. Clock running, 114 left. Ham with a lot of time, Whoa. bombs away. And it's complete to Frank Johnson. <laughs> he just threw it as far as he could. That's and Johnson right. ran under it. That's exactly right. He just said, you go deep. 
Again, he had a lot of time back there. Furman defensive line could not get any pressure. Tracy Ham just all of a sudden notice that quick release oh. and just let that baby fly. And Robert Little was back there to make the tackle. I don't think he could believe that Ham could throw the ball that far, but he did. Ham back to throw again. Plenty of time. Now running. 25. Tries to get out of bounds and does and stops the clock with 52 seconds left. Boy, with Ham with the ball, I would not want to be on defense. He no. just kills it. Because you, you're you never right when in whatever decision you make, he always does the opposite. You say, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and stay back in coverage, and then he gets a 10-yard gain. You say, I'm going to come up and stop him for this one, and then he completes the pass right behind you to your man. Second down, five yards to go at the 25-yard line. Georgia Southern cannot settle for a field goal. They're down by four. They need a touchdown. Ham is responsible for 489 yards in total offense, 371 yards passing, and 118 rushing. What a ball game. Ham set this time. They got a hold of him, and they'll sack him at the 30-yard line. Number 50, Eddie Bopp, and number 79, Adrian Dupre. And that may have been the biggest tackle they've ever combined on. That's exactly right. They're going to be going to the sideline, but you have to be ever-present of them going over the middle, especially with as much success as they've had throwing that square-in route today. Hand back to throw on third and 11. Going for the end zone. Out of bounds. Monty Sharp. Tried to haul it down, but he was at least five yards out of bounds. And now it is fourth and 11 with 38 seconds to go. Georgia Southern has to get the first down to keep the drive alive. That's right. That's a very, very good point that they do have to get that first down. And then the key is you don't have to go to the end zone. You know? So you go to that intermediate route, you start running, you flood the zone or you know, you got everybody thinking pass. You got the Furman coaches saying, hey, back up, back up. But hey, it's only fourth and 11. I'd like to see this one go on forever. You hate to see either team. Oh, oh. What do we have here? And the center, everybody moved. But except the center. There's one key thing. You can't play without the football. That's right. <laughs> the other 10 guys were so <laughs> I think the majority the rules this way dead ball Focus here oh my yes the referee being very diplomatic because he's probably running for political office <laughs> so it's still fourth and 11 37 seconds left to go ham is gonna run it now he throws complete to the 13-yard line. What a play by Tracy Hamm, and did he have a lot on that one to Tony Belser. They'll stop the clock while they move the chains, and then it will restart again. That's right. It's oh, good. what a gun he had on that one. Boy, he did. Got his shoulders turned it nice. He was weaving his way through traffic, saw Belser, and just let that baby rip. The clock will start again as soon as the officials mark it for play. 29 seconds to go. No timeouts left for Georgia Southern. Ham just throws this one in the cheap seats. Yeah, if my guy can't get it, that's a smart play. My guy can't get it. I don't want anybody to get it. 21 seconds left, and this will give uh, the sideline a chance to send in a couple of plays for Tracy Ham, patterns they want him to run. Again, remember, they are out of timeouts. And almost out of time. 21 seconds to go. Mike Patrick and Sam Atkins with you. Hope you've enjoyed the ball game. It has been a beauty to watch. I know I have. And yeah, we've enjoyed bringing it to you. Sam, it's been a pleasure working with you. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ham back to throw. Looking in the end zone under pressure. And threw this one away. Another smart play by Ham. He almost threw that one in the parking lot. Tremendous pressure by Al Peterson, who is just beside himself because, again, Tracy Ham made him miss. He was bearing down, coming right up the middle, and, and Tracy just gave him that limp leg, and then all he could do was tackle air. There's Tracy back in the pocket. You'll see number 75 come out of nowhere right up the middle, and just Tracy made him miss. 14 seconds left, third and 10 
for Georgia Southern. Ham, Frankie Johnson. Frankie Johnson on the quick post pattern, and with 10 seconds to go, Tracy Ham throws another bullet, and what a catch by Johnson. My goodness, unbelievable. Frankie Johnson has had an unbelievable second half. There is a flag down, and I think this is going to be because of the celebration. Yeah, illegal participation. Uh, you don't expect them to celebrate in that uh, position? 44-42, Georgia Southern by two with 10 seconds left. They'll try to make it three. That is an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that will cost them 15 yards. Which will be assessed on the kickoff. And that seems to be a little out of whack, too, 15 yards for that. Especially uh, under the circumstances. Yeah. Foley will try the point after. He's rather academic. Another bad snap, he and he it. missed this one. Tracy Ham, 22 of 35, 400 yards in the air and four touchdowns. That's an option quarterback. Unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. Now, that, that penalty, though, let's take a look at the touchdown first. Here you see Tracy again pumping to the left and then throwing back on a seam route over the middle to Frankie Johnson. Oh. What a shot by Tracy Ham! Right between three defenders. Take great a look throw, at it once again. Catch. From the end zone, you can see. All of a sudden, he'll come right. There it is. Throws it right between those three defenders. Great concentration. Frankie Johnson has made some tremendous catches. Now, Furman's only chance here is to run the kickoff back. But and now, you know what Georgia Southern is going to do with the football. One thing to bear in mind, though, is it's not over till it's over. That 15-yard penalty is now making its presence felt. Because take it back they to the 25. Take it to the 25, which brings the kickoff. Probably they'll catch the ball around the 20 to the 15-yard line, so they might have one play. Which if be they local. kick it deep. Now, do you kick it deep or do you kick a squib kick? If you kick a squib kick, you might have you might be within uh, range for a, a desperation which, field goal, which would not allow them a chance to get their kickoff return. The thing the coaches are faced with is you kick it deep, you allow them to set up their kickoff return team. You kick a squib kick, you you give up the yardage, but you uh, don't let them set up their return, right. and you get a guy who's not used to handling the ball, handling the ball. Ten seconds to go. Tracy Ham with just an unbelievable ball game, and that doesn't include with what he has done on the ground, 113 yards rushing. I so 550 13 yards offense from one guy. I think that he will sleep well tonight. Here's the kickoff. Let's see what they do, and they'll kick it deep. Mark Rudder, last chance for Furman from the 13-yard line. He's got a seam up the sideline. And Rudder out of bounds with four seconds to go. Holy oh. cow, I thought he was going to break it all away. My goodness. And as my partner Yogi said, it's not over till it's over. Still four <laughs> seconds to go, and you can bet Bobby Lamb is going to throw that baby up for grabs. Or another one of your partners said it ain't over till the fat lady sings. That's right. <laughs> Lamb will send three wide receivers all to the left side. They will hope for a penalty. Now, here's where that penalty comes into effect. If it is ruled interference, it is not at the point of the foul. They would only get 10 yards from it. They would get 15 yards if it's a long pass. Yes, and excuse then, me. But they would also get another play. Right. Because you cannot end the game on a defensive foul. 15 out. yards uh, would bring them within long field goal range. So let's see what happens. Bobby Lamb, who has also played a great game at quarterback for Furman, rolling out under a lot of pressure, just throws it. It'll be intercepted. No, it's short, but the ball game is over. And Georgia Southern, after being down 28 to 6, has climaxed a tremendous comeback. The end of the game, Georgia Southern 44-42. So long, everybody.